Long ago in the waning days of the Roman Empire, there were a group of men who looked around and saw the decaying state of their societies. These men were disenfranchised. They broke away from society, formed their own tribes. These tribes outlasted the Roman Empire. It was through these tribes that we know substantial knowledge about the past. They preserved knowledge and technology. These men were known as the monastics. From the ashes you came, to the ashes you shall return. You did not ask for this life, and yet here you are. Are you going to make the most of it, or are you just going to lay down and rot? In this era of humanity we find ourselves in, we are literally born and told by every interaction that the world around us hates us. Greetings viewers, I am Emperor Dion. The modern man has been stripped of everything, from his role in society, right down to his very sexuality and his ability to satisfy his sexual role. You know what I say is true because it probably resonates you subconsciously, even if it doesn't. These facts bear themselves out in real world statistics. The rates of suicide are not even close, not even close to equal and it's very very sad. With the entire world seemingly turned away, there have been many efforts by individuals collectively known as the Manosphere to address these problems and find solutions. Concepts such as social dynamics and game have discussed at great length as the way to re reintegrate these men into the world. But all these concepts were fallacious and deeply flawed, only causing further pain and suffering. Then they tried the concept of outright denial and walking away from it entirely. MGTOW community exploded because it appealed to our deep desire to want to take control of our own lives. But this sense of control is just as fallacious as social dynamics and game. MGTOW failed to address the fundamental issues for men. When you reject the whole world and what was previously so, what do you replace it with? Some men found the suitable answer, and I can't take that away from them, but the majority did not. They stumbled into consumerism, hedonism, homosexuality, all objectively worse circumstances than the ones you failed to walk away from. Furthermore, you were never in control to begin with, nor did you choose to walk away. We were simply never let in. MGTOW did not address the core issue, that men feel worthless and arguably made the situation worse. All the above efforts, and a few others not mentioned here, were all coined under the term the Red Pill, and all of them fell. There is an answer to all of men's problems, and it's been staring you right in the face your whole life. It's always been there. All you needed to do was acknowledge it. The whole new world understanding opens up when you do. But many of you won't like the answer, and that's fine. After all, you didn't ask to be here, and yet here you are. You won't be here forever. You'll eventually return to the ashes from which you came. You will die. For many of us, there was a time where the future looked bright. We dwelled in the blue-pilled wonderland, dreaming of the futures that didn't exist for us. The most basic human experiences, romantic love, intimacy, family formation, all promised to you, and yet never received them. Instead, you were met with coldness, even outright hostility. The thing about the truth is that you don't need to find it. It will come to you. You either invite it as a guest to your home or it will force its way in and drive you into a rage. This is, this is only your fault. If the truth makes you angry, you will scream, but you only have yourself to blame. And this is the real origin of the Red Pill Rage, because you did not invite the truth into your home when it could have helped you, and now the truth must burn down everything you've propped up in your mind. But the so-called Red Pill itself is false truth. On the face value, games, social dynamics, and MGTOW sound plausible, but many men end their journey here with only half the truth. 
they never progress further. In fact, some will even regress, filtering their newfound knowledge through their previous blue pill conditioning. This is the origin of the purple pill, a regression, a step backwards, into false knowledge, a state worse than ignorance. These men will live and die here. They will continue to stagnate here, wasting more and more precious time. But what if I told you it didn't have to end like this? What if I told you you could have the whole truth? Let us rewind from this mediocre fate that awaits these so-called red pillars. You don't want to go here. So here we are, back at the beginning. The cracks have already begun to form in a narrative you were told to believe. Are you ready to invite the truth in this time? Then it is time to let go of your fucking pride. Stop beating your chest like a goddamn gorilla. If you think you're really tough, go step in the ring with this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Look. Men have a hard time letting go of this pride, but this is precisely what red pill scammers and MGTOWs use to convince you of their fake masculinity. But true masculinity is intelligence. It's the one thing that makes us greater than those animals. Intelligent behavior shows a willingness to accept facts as they are presented in the physical world, even if that means admitting fault, weakness, and deficiency in oneself. And this is where it comes full circle. Those men who think intelligently while letting go of that false pride will inevitably reach what is known as the black pill. Or as I like to call it, just the truth, because that's what it is. See, here's the reason why most don't make it this far. The truth does not care for feelings. This is something that red pillars, ironically enough, love to say about women. But it's also more true for them than it is for anyone else. The truth can be that it was over for you before you were even born. It can be that you were outcasted for your race, your height, your face. It can even be a combination of all three of those. The truth indeed does not care about feelings, but red pillars forget to mention this. It also includes them as well. The black pill, the truth. These things affect each and every person whether they acknowledge it or not, whether they know it or not, whether they accept it or not. It does not matter. Water will remain wet. Your ass will remain firmly planted to your seat thanks to gravity. And women will keep sexually starving you because of your height, because of your face, because of your race. You never lack social skills. You never chose this life that you have. There was no pickup line that you could have said that would have gotten you the girl that you liked. The truth very well could have been that you were doomed to live this abysmal life before you were even born. You wanted the truth, right? All of us prop up false narratives that the truth will eventually tear down. You may regret learning the truth, but once you have it, there's no going back. You will try to forget it, but it will follow you. You will try to run away, but there is no escape. You may wish to be done with the truth, but the truth is not done with you. And it will come to collect each and every time you fail to heed it. That's what you wanted, right? Well, now you've got something that forces you to confront the black abyss your deepest, darkest fears. The truth is, matter of fact, dangerous. It can easily strip you away of your meaning and confront you with the deepest, blackest pits of despair. You may even come to the conclusion that life has no meaning, but life does have meaning. 
our ancestors saw unimaginable amounts of horror and suffering. And yet they continued forward with virtue and a fierce will to live. In the face of realities far harsher than our own modern day, they struggled, they survived, they learned, and they ultimately thrived. The meaning of life is found not just in suffering, but victory in spite of struggle, progress in spite of what logic says, defying reality, achieving goals that you didn't think you could. The truth told all our ancestors that life would be hard, and laying down and dying would be a lot easier, and yet they didn't. They didn't choose this life, but since you've come this far to seek wisdom, then allow me. Allow me to introduce you to the final pill. Victory in spite of struggle, defiance in spite of odds. Almost none will reach this, but those who do are the zenith of masculinity. A special few of you who can reach this golden pill. You will become exactly what the enemies of men feared you would become. A real man. A true masculine male. It's the final pill, the gold pill. It's a belief system of the monastic man. A monastic, a man of the golden pill, is a man in harmony with the truth. While the truth harms most people, the monastic man's relationship with it is as intimate as that between a Jedi, his lightsaber, and the force. It can't be both your shield and sword, because your entire life has been reorganized to allow truth to flow right into your life, in complete harmony with your actions, thoughts, and feelings. The monastic man has a religious sense of self and purpose, which is based around the gold pill. This is because mostly he has ascended beyond the modern programming of society and whatever weird dissident alt-right French group you stumbled upon. Because let's be real here, just because it's not a part of mainstream society does not mean they don't want to program you. Now the gold pill has three core tenets, truth, which has been discussed this entire video up to this point. The second tenet, however, knowledge, a highly powerful aspect which asks, what do you know? Where's your mind at? And how can you apply it? 
Knowledge is power, and by itself can take the monastic man and his allies very far. Third tenet is passion. Do you have passion to live? Those who can consistently move with passion will push beyond the ordinary to do the extraordinary and inspire those around him to follow his example. The gold pill recognizes that there is a tremendous amount of evil in the world, and no proper man likes this fact. Whenever you witness evil, if it's within your power to do something about it, you do it. Otherwise, do not expose yourself to unnecessary harm. In general, you stand for justice, because people who cause unnecessary harm generally upset the progress of the world. Those who commit mistreatment out of habit are the enemy of the monastic man. The monastic man is a man of action where it matters most. The gold pill demands that you be an exceptional man. There are nine activities specifically that the monastic man occupies himself with to gain proficiency in and to prove his exceptionalness. Economics, education, entertainment, politics, labor, law, spirituality, sex, and war. These activities exist to address the fundamental shortcomings that brought you to the manosphere in the first place. Because if you're here, it's probably because you were lacking in something. Whatever it is, we've all got something to improve. And the monastic man is an exceptional man. You must address your issues directly. Activity 1. Economics. This means you personally not being financially dependent on anyone and living by your own means. If you are broke, you inherently can't be a monastic, as this means you are dependent. That is inherently unmanly and makes one vulnerable. You don't need to be rich, but your financial situation needs to be immaculate. Activity 2. Education. The activity is seeking new knowledge. This especially makes red pillars incapable of the gold pill because they exist mainly in echo chambers, never seeking to explore fresh ideas or concepts. The monastic man never settles for what he already knows, and education is a never-ending activity that you should always be invested in. The world is changing and you must always educate yourself and adapt. Activity 3. Entertainment. Having an appreciation for the simpler things in life. This activity is of lesser importance but certainly not to be ignored. This is pretty straightforward. You're a human being. Others are human beings. Do not neglect humanity. Make sure you can put a smile on your face as well as others. Activity 4. Labor. A proper man should not be afraid of work. The monastic man must be willing to work hard to further his position and those of his allies. Any true man works. If you don't work, you don't eat generally. Hard work is a virtue of a man. Now, this is not to be misconstrued with working a dead-end job where you get nowhere for minimum wage. That is not what this activity means. But it does mean when, you, when it benefits you, you should work hard. Activity 5. Law. The monastic man is a man who both respects laws and is not afraid to enforce his own. You must follow the laws of those more powerful than you and set your own so that no one takes advantage of you. Law is connected to both justice and virtue. If you're not able to maintain those, then how can anybody respect you? Activity 6. Politics. The art of negotiating with others. Politics exists in almost every facet of life, and a skilled politician is as effective as an entire army. Activity 7. Spirituality. This is the relationship between you and your most core values and beliefs. A sacred part of you that defines many key aspects of your character. This is one of the few parts as a man that is truly unique from all others. You must foster and grow it well. Nobody or nothing can dictate your spirituality. Number 8. Sex. The gold pill is not going to let you off the hook here. You need to be having sex. And by sex, I don't mean jacking off to big booty food of my little pony porn. You need to be having real actual sex with a woman. If you're gay, you cannot be gold pill. This activity's purpose, like most others, is to force you to confront your weaknesses directly. How can you call yourself an exceptional man when you can't even do something that every life form from the mindless bacteria to the humble fish does? You must be having sex. This is probably what brought you to the manosphere because you were looking answers Well, the gold pill is telling you to directly address this. This is where the black pill comes in handy. The black pill tells you about lookism, genetic determinism, and looks maxing, location maxing, all of these things. Use it to help you prosper in this activity. You need to be doing it. Even if not for pleasure, just to improve your social relations with those around you. In activity 9, 
Last but certainly not least, war. If you have conflict with others that cannot be resolved by talking, you destroy them completely and utterly without mercy or you retreat until you can. The thing about this is that more than likely other people are going to do the same to you if you don't do it to them. And that's just a fact of life. The art of war defines this activity and the monastic man is also a warrior. Old Pill is concerned with self-actualization, whether you're still on your journey to it and getting close or have already reached it. This is the highest level of your personhood and development. The activities are about helping you unleash that potential. The gold pill is about purpose and finding meaning in a seemingly meaningless existence. You didn't ask to be here, but this is the goal of philosophy that you're damn sure going to push life as far as you can push it. And that is what it means to be a man. This has been Emperor Dion. If you would like to discuss these concepts with me further, you can join my Discord server. I'll talk to anyone who shows up and asks to talk to me. I will be signing off now. Peace.